The Ultimate Home Gym product is one that combines a ton of versatility in as small form factor as possible. With quite possibly the most hyped product release in the home gym market for some time, Rep has essentially had this goal in mind and hopes to accomplish it. This is our Rep Aries review. Hey guys, it's Coop from Garage Gym Reviews. And today I am probably more excited than I have been to review a product for some time when something that claims to do as much as this product does and in as small form factor as this one does and has as much hype, video, content, I get really excited. This is one that I've been wanting to do ever since it was announced. It's been like a couple years now and we finally have it here. Now, this one is kind of special in that I've had a couple things happen. Number one, we had it shipped in, have been able to train with it. So I've trained with it every way that I know how, some DIY hack stuff, some like stuff they don't even mention on the website, as well as the mini exercise they talk about. In addition to that, I literally yesterday just got back from Colorado where I was visiting Rep Fitness and was able to speak with their engineers on their goal for the machine. But without further ado, the way I wanna start is specifically with the assembly because the assembly is something that does take, as you'll see, quite a bit of time. Thanks, Coop. All right, so overall, the assembly process on this was it, was, it was pretty good, I'm not gonna lie. It's not the best assembly experience that I've had in the world, but it's by far not the worst. Whenever you first open up this massive crate that is literally like the size of a hot tub, you find these boxes with all these numbers on it, and my mind automatically jumped to, oh, Nice job, Rep. You, you put numbers on the boxes that correspond with the steps that we're gonna find in the instructions. Quickly, we found out that that was not the case. So Rep, do yourself a favor, do us a favor, correspond the boxes with the steps and the instructions, and it'll make for a lot better, a lot smoother assembly experience. There's a lot of pulleys. You have to take each pulley off. You have to take the bolt out in order to actually run your cabling. You got two 310 pound weight stacks, so be prepared. You're gonna be doing some lifting. And with it being a 96 inch rack, you're gonna be doing a lot of overhead work. The closest rack that I would compare this entire actual system to is really the Force USA G20, which took over 40 hours to build. You've heard me complain about it in multiple videos. This took us four or five hours, somewhere in there to build. If you were doing it by yourself, it's gonna be a 10 to 12 hour a day for sure. Uh, so overall, it was a much better experience uh, than building something like the Force USA. Okay, because there's so much to talk about here, I've broken this up into five sections. First is pulleys and cables. Then we've got functional trainer. Then we've got weight stacks. Then we've got lat pull down and low row. And finally, we've got attachment and accessories. I'm gonna walk through all of these. I'm gonna give you my opinion on all of them. I've used every part of this. I'm gonna compare it at the end to other ones that are out there and give you my overall recommendation along with all the pros and cons. So jump on, we've got a ride. All right, first is pulleys and cables. As you can imagine, there is a lot going on here. And this is kind of the magic. They've got to route all of this cabling all throughout a normal power rack because what they're using as their base is the Rep PR4000 or Rep PR5000. Now I'm not gonna go into every aspect of that rack. We've done full reviews on those. If you'd like to see them, you can check them out in the link below the like button along with any links that go to this product or any other video that we talk about within this video. But the base of the system is the traditional power rack. This is made after the fact. So it's not like they brought out the Aries and then they created the squat rack first. No, they've got to work around it. They had to figure out a way to have six attachment points all throughout the system. And so in order to do that, you have to throw in a ton of pulleys. In fact, this thing has 36 pulleys. Rep traditionally has used plastic pulleys, nylon pulleys, and they've since switched to aluminum. I actually asked them about this while I was out in Colorado, and this was their response. There's like basically a, a trade-off between either a nylon pulley or an aluminum pulley. If you go with aluminum, the cables are gonna wear faster. Okay. So, but if you're going with the nylon, then the pulleys are gonna wear faster. Yep. In a home gym environment, the biggest thing is really gonna be 
wanting those pulleys to last a long time because sure. you're really just not going to put enough wear into that cable to need to replace it anytime soon. So the pulleys are throughout the system. This is what connects the cabling, which has a 96 inch total travel for the 93 inch rack and then 72 inches on the basement friendly 80 inch rack. So depending on which rack you get, that's gonna allow you to have either a farther or closer to the rack system. But I will say that because they're using a two to one ratio on the stacks with all the pulleys they're using throughout, you can get far enough away from the system where you can do just about any movement you want to. Now, one thing that I thought was kind of cool if you look on all of the pulleys, they actually have holes throughout. And I asked them about this, and they said the reason they did this is because they wanted an homage to the equalizer plates. So if you remember on the equalizer plates, they're like the six shooter style, but instead of a circle, they're using like an octagonal idea. If you look on the front pulleys, it's the same exact cutouts. One, this makes the system lighter, but I think the real feature for it is more aesthetic. You can see the pulley moving while you're using it. And although it's not like a huge deal, it just shows that they're thinking through the details and you'll see throughout this review, there are just a lot of details. And there kind of has to be because there's just so much going on. Now, the thing that you're really wanting to know about the cables and pulleys is one, are they gonna be able to hold as much weight as the system is designed for? Well, they're designed to hold 450 pound weight capacity. That's what they come out and said. The stacks do not meet that but it gives you a little bit of extra range where if you wanted to increase the weight on the system, which I, some people probably will, although I don't think really 99.99999% will have to, but if you'd like to, you could add on a pop pin or a plate pin to increase the load. But throughout the entire range of motion, it's extremely smooth. This was one thing I worried about. Anytime you add complexity, especially with pulleys, you're introducing potential friction or the potential for the cable to pop off. So in order to test it, I wanted to do slow movements, fast movements, just basically trying on all the attachment points, how can I try to get this off? And it is smooth through the entire range of motion on every attachment point which shows they thought through a lot on how to get the cabling moved throughout the rack. Okay, next is the functional trainer, and this is what we see on the front. Now, in my opinion, the functional trainer on the Aerie system is one of the, I would say, somewhat low points. One of the things that people do on functional trainers is they like to do chest flies, and with chest flies, you want a lot of stretch. Well, the problem is you don't have the cabling as wide out. So when you're stretching, you're kind of like pulling back. It's just a little awkward. So this is why I say the functional trainer isn't as good as a dedicated functional trainer. Anytime you're trying to save space, you have to give something up. But for most people, I think you're gonna be fine with most exercises with the functional trainer. But the system on the front is very smooth as well. So not only are the pulley smooth, but also the adjustment of the trolley system. They've come out with a special plastic that is non-marring and self-oiling that allows you to go up and down the upright with one hand. Rollers would be smoother, but I have a white upright and I haven't seen any scarring on the rack from the functional trainer and it allows it to go up and down pretty quickly. It also has just this nice sound. Like when you pop the pin, it's an oversized knob with a knurled handle that is inspired by barbells. When you grab it, it just feels really good in hand. Now, one thing they thought through on the pulley is using the laser cut on the upright to know where you're at. So they put a cut out there so you can see exactly what the laser hole number is when you're going up and down. So you can use that as reference when you're trying to level out both sides. Again, another minor feature, but could have been a detail that was overlooked. The entire system from the side to side sway, how smooth it is, to just the overall fit and finish of the knurled handle, like it's money. Really the biggest downside of the functional trainer is something that's just inherent with squat racks is that it's kind of thin, but overall the functional trainer gets the job done. Next is weight stacks. When you're using a two to one ratio and you're wanting to use it for a lap pull down, that can sometimes cause a lot of issues because let's say you use a 300 pound stack, which is standard on a two to one ratio, that's 150 pounds on a lap pull or low row. A lot of people are going to be able to do more than that. And that's why they introduced not one, but two. 260 pound weight stack. That's standard with the ability to upgrade up to 310 pounds. Now, let me tell you something. When you add two 310 pound weight stacks to the back of a rack, it is not moving anywhere, okay? That's one of the nice things about this system is it's sitting on the ground on the back. It increases the stability of your rack a ton. There is no side to side sway. 
But the other benefit of it is you are able to combine them together. As I'll talk about in the attachments portion, they built this so you could use both stacks at the same time on the same handle, or you could use them alternating. You can do alternating lap pull downs. You can do alternating presses. You can alternating low rows. There is not another machine out there except a separate functional trainer that isn't going to be able to get as heavy as this one that can really do that. That is a huge benefit of the Aerie system and also a benefit in that it takes up so little space. In fact, this sits in about the same spot that their lap pull down and low row that was plate loaded sits. So this means you can still squat bench and do everything you could do inside of the rack like you could do before except adjustable bench. So if you're going to do incline, you're going to have to figure out a way to do that. That's really the only limiting factor I found to this taking up so much of the inside space. It still allows you to store your plates on the outside while being able to work all throughout the inside. It powers all six attachments and I would say for most people, I think the 260 pounds is probably fine. But I can understand never wanting to be limited, so that's why I went the 310 pound option. Now, one thing that I like that they added on the system is instead of putting the actual weight of the stack on the stack, they put the fuel weight. Sometimes they'll use the lap pull down and it'll say like 300 pounds, but really it's a two to one ratio, so it's having that, so it's really 150 pounds. It's whatever the feels at the top. Next section is the lap pull down in low row. The lap pull down is really the shining achievement of this rack. It's just very well done. It allows you to do all the lap pull downs you'd want to do with a standard lap pull down bar, but also allows you to use a banana hook, which comes with the system. So you can use a single attachment point. If you have other lap pull down bars, you can tuck right up under there and do a vertical pull because the pulleys are coming out far enough. It just feels very good. And the other thing that I found is a benefit to this that I've never been able to do on a lap pull down is because you're using a bench for your seat, you can move the bench out and you can do kneeling lap pull downs. You can also do standing lap pull downs. So this is something I did while I was out at, in Colorado is I just moved the bench out and because I was doing higher reps around 12 to 15, I just did standing lap pull downs. There aren't really any other lap pull downs you can do that because there's always a seat in the middle. Now, I don't think that's necessarily the preferred way to do it. With having to use leg rollers inside like a flip down safety, or you can use something like, say, Rogue's hip thruster bench, just something like that. You're having to figure out how do I have this so my legs are staying down, especially if you're going really heavy, and so I'm seated on my bench. For most people, I don't think it matters, but it's something to be aware of for people that are coming from a dedicated lap pull down system. Now to the bottom, which is the low row. The low row, one, can get heavy because you can combine the stacks, but two, I felt like the low row pulleys were a little bit lower than I really wanted. In fact, it feels a little bit awkward when I'm doing low rows. When you're using a normal low row, the cabling is coming right through your feet. In fact, if you look at the low row plate on the Rep Aries that they're using, it's the same plate that they use on their dedicated lap pull down and low row with the plate loaded on most of the machines. So it's got the cutout for the cabling to come through but the cabling isn't coming right through the middle about the ball of your foot. It's actually coming down below on the sides of your heels. So it's just a little bit different angle than what I'm used to. This is gonna limit your ROM a little bit, but if you're sitting with an upright back and you're just pulling, it works. But my preferred way to use the low row is to use separate handles. They do include a bar that allows you to attach the two together, but I think for most people, like the handles just feel better, allow you to have a better range of motion and just feel less restricted. So that's how I'd use it. Okay, the attachment accessories are kind of hit or miss. The one that stands out the most is the custom lap pull down bar because it needs to connect at very specific points to the attachment points at the top. It is a pretty nice lap pull down bar. The knurling's nice, it's chrome, it swivels. It's not like super high end, it's not stainless or anything like that, but I think it meets the goal that they're trying to accomplish and it works. Next you have a banana clip and this allows you to connect the two top pulleys if you wanna use your own lap pull down bar. I really like that. Or if you wanna use like a V grip or something like that. Then you have a low row bar for the bottom that also includes a swivel in the middle for you to connect things to. This to me is like half done. One, they should have come out with a banana clip for the bottom. 
They should have come out with a specific one for the bottom as well as the low row bar, rather than having to pull both the low row bar and whatever attachment you have attached to it. I would have liked them to create some sort of neutral grip with a banana clip already assembled into it, and then you could use that. I mean, that's how most people are using low rows, and it would have been nice just to be able to do that out of the box. Then on the front, they include two urethane D handles. These things suck. They do, they're just not good. They have really good metal handles that are knurled that they sell on their site. They call them the Pro Series. This is a really high-end piece. Just include the freaking good handles. If somebody's buying this at the cost that it is, they're not gonna mind spending 20, 40 bucks more to have nice handles. They did tell me though that they are working on a better option so we'll see what that is. Maybe they're working on it because I just trashed them when I was in front of them. These things are not good. <laughs> I don't, they're gonna beat me up once the camera's off. Okay, so that's every part of the system. Let me kind of bring that all together. Here's what I think is very good about this system. Number one is there is so much you can do in such a small factor. You are using a rack you've already got and suddenly you have a lat pull down with really heavy stacks. Suddenly you have a low row with super heavy stacks. Suddenly you have a functional trainer with super heavy stacks. In addition to that, it doesn't limit any of the inherent functionality of the squat rack. It's not like the cables run along the bottom holes. No, they made the cables run below so you can still use band pegs. It's not like the stacks get in the way of squatting and it's like right in your face. No, they're using a pushback cross member that allows it to sit farther back. It's not like you're having to clear space from the back of the rack. It doesn't limit any of the functionality and it's really only upside. Like there's just so much you can do in this small form factor. It is incredible, seriously. Like it is amazing how many different attachment points, six attachment points with two 310 pound stacks. I'm so glad they didn't like chimp out and just put in like 150 stacks because you can get a true lat pull down, true heavy low row, as well as functional trainer all in one system. I mean, it's just like, it's very well done. The next is like how complex it is, yet how smooth it feels. It's not like they ran all these cables like haphazardly, like this is something where they thought through the details. In fact, they thought through the details so much, even on assembly, when we're like assembling the bottom pulleys, instead of having a separate nut, they weld the nut to the bottom so you can just quickly screw it in without having to try and get your wrench under there. There's just so many details from the cutouts on the rep logo to the equalizer plates, to the two attachment points and the distance between them, the low row plate, there's just a, like a lot there. So I'm glad they took the extra time for it to come out and to work on it because I think it's really paid off. Next, they didn't limit the purchaser or the person who owns a, a rep squat rack already. Whatever depth you have and you own a PR5000 V2 or a PR4000, this system's gonna work, which I think is awesome. Except for those that own, own an Omni, like Nathan. Sorry, Nathan. And the four other people that own Omni Rex. <laughs> <laughs> and then lastly, they thought through this working with their other attachments. If you wanted to use, you know, say jammer arms, whether you want to use their ISO arms or Rogue's LT1 trolley system or Sorenex's, like because of the way the functional trainer works and moves up and down, you can basically just move your jammer arms out of the way and use them. Or you can still use your safety spotter system or your half safety spotter bars or really any of those attachments you want to use. This doesn't limit you from using those. One of the most fun things about having a home gym is experimenting with movements. You know, you're not there looking goofy for everybody at the commercial gym. Because you have so much heavy stacks and so many cable movements, and you're using one inch holes on three by three uprights, like the amount of attachments and things you can figure out to combine with other attachments you have is awesome. It's like an erector set, it's very fun. And I will find a lot of people that will get this will be experimenting. Overall, like I am a huge fan of this and this will have a permanent spot in my garage gym. But on the con side, number one, there's no band pegs. So if you look on their Athena system, if you look on their lat pull down system, it's got some sort of accommodating resistance like band pegs. It's just built in the system. It's something that a lot of people like to use. Now, because you've got one inch holes, you can probably figure out a way to use band pegs. I'm sure I can figure out a way to use band pegs and then wrap bands around it, but it's just not really made for that. Number two, as you heard Sam talk about, is the assembly time's long. Like, this is just a complex product 
and some of it is pre-assembled, but a lot of it isn't. And there's just so many pulleys you got to figure out how to put together. It's nice that they did assemble some of the bottom part and some of the pulleys so you don't have to like all of it be assembled, but it would be nice if it was quicker. It's just kind of the reality. And then once you build it, it's there. <laughs> so make sure when you put this together, like one, you're going to take a lot of time, so you don't want to do it twice. And two, just make sure you like the spot because you're not like budging this to the side or something. Like it's, it's there. So don't be an idiot like us. Like we built it two inches too close to the wall. We forgot that the pulley stick off just a little bit. And so we had to get car jacks. We had to get ratchet straps. I had to attach it to my dumbbell rack over here. Like Sam was like, how can I MacGyver? How do we get this to move? And it just took all that to move it two inches. Next is the low row pulleys. I wish they were just a little bit higher and I wish the accessories that came with it was some sort of banana clip so I could do a neutral grip pulley. Because they're down below, if you do any sort of pull where they're connected, the potential is though they could hit your feet. I feel like they could have made the low row foot plate push out a little bit farther so you could have more range of motion and then you wouldn't be hitting your feet. I feel like there's just so much distance on these on this cable travel and why not use it in a way that allow the pulleys to be a little bit higher so you're not hitting your feet. Again, this is minor, but it is something that I was thinking through. If you really like using neutral grip for pulling, the low row is just not quite as good as a dedicated single cable low row. The other ones are pretty minor, like the accessories are just okay, but you can buy other accessories. The start weight on the plate is 10 pounds and it goes in five pound increments. 10 pounds may be a little bit heavy for people on certain therapy exercises, but again, I think it's probably okay too. And then lastly, just understand, you can't really use a spotter while you're benching. You should be using safety spotters anyways, but if you're lifting with friends and you're used to having somebody there help you get that last rep, you got it, buddy, then you may not be able to use that guy. Okay, so to close out, this is a long review, but there's a lot here. And somebody purchasing this, like you wanna know the depth. This is an expensive piece. And once you build it, like it's there. So you wanna know, like if you put this together, if you buy it, you're gonna keep it. Here's what I'd say, like I'm a huge fan of this piece. Like I like it so much. My previous favorite cable piece is the Rogue Rhino. If I can figure out how to do belt squats on this thing, I'm probably gonna replace the Rogue Rhino in my rack with this. Like, just, I like it that much. There's so much you can do with it. I was worried because of how much hype there was around it. And Rep in the past have had some product releases, like their belt squat, where I felt like they released them a little too quickly. I was worried about that a little bit with this one. No, this one is on the money. This is Rep's magnum opus. Like this is the best thing they've ever produced. And I highly recommend this to people that have the cash and want a compact system that does so much. I'm a fan of it for real. Now, one of the questions we're gonna get is should you get this or an Athena? Should you get this or a dedicated lat pull down? Should you get this or like the Prime Single Stack or the Prime HLP Prodigy? Some of those questions or a Force USA. There's just a lot of comparables. I wanna do a separate video on the comparables. So if you'd like to see that, make sure you hit the subscribe button and let us know in the comments, anything that we missed, anything you'd like to know, we'll try and get back to you or any videos related to this you wanna see in the future. This has been Coop from Garage and Reviews. We'll see you next time. Peace.